concubinage was a common practice in ancient China, as well as in many other societies throughout history. In China, concubines were often considered inferior to primary wives and were expected to serve and obey their husbands. It was seen as a way for men to produce offspring and have companionship outside of their primary marriages, and it was also a way for families to increase social and political ties through the exchange of women. In some cases, concubines were treated unfairly, with little legal protection and few rights and were considered little more than slaves. However, in other cases, concubines could be treated well and advance the interests of their own families or to gain political power. In imperial China, concubines were often young girls who were purchased or given as gifts to wealthy men or to the emperor. These women had little say in the matter and were often isolated from the outside world. Some concubines were taken as war captives, and others entered into the arrangements willingly. Concubines could be recruited from a variety of sources, including noble families, commoners, and foreign tributary states, and they were often given different levels of status and privilege within the palace based on their birth, beauty, and other factors. Anyhow, it is important to recognize that the practice of concubinage was often exploitative and oppressive for the women involved, who had little agency and were treated as property. The number of concubines a man had was often seen as a sign of wealth and status, but it did not necessarily reflect the man's character or morals. To become a concubine in the royal family, candidates must go through a series of inspections and qualification tests. These requirements can vary depending on the preferences of the emperor, but generally, aspirants are expected to be physically attractive and possess intelligence, mental stability, and discipline. The ages of the recruited ladies typically fall between 13 and 16, and are subjected to thorough physical and behavioral evaluations, and those who do not meet the imperial standards are rejected. Ladies who pass the evaluation stage undergo a rigorous training period, which includes intellectual, temperament, moral and philosophical instruction. The final step for aspiring concubines is a series of exams and assessments on a range of subjects including Chinese literature and art. They will be ranked based on their performance in these tests, and the highest-ranked individuals will be offered positions as concubines to the emperor. In the Chinese imperial court, the harem was a place where the emperor kept his empress, concubines and female servants. The harem was typically a separate area within the palace, and access was restricted to the emperor and a select group of trusted officials and eunuchs. The hierarchy within the harem was often complex and fluid, and depended on a variety of factors, including the woman's status, the emperor's favor, and the political climate at the time. Concubines in the Forbidden City enjoyed a higher status than ordinary female servants, but they were not considered to be legally married to the emperor. They were also not allowed to have relationships with men besides the emperor. It is also worth noting that life in the Forbidden City was not necessarily a life of luxury and leisure. Concubines and servants were subject to strict rules and discipline, and they were expected to follow a rigorous schedule of daily activities, including studying, practicing the arts, and performing various duties within the household. They were punished or even exiled if they transgressed. If a concubine became pregnant, it was seen as a sign of favor from the emperor and could lead to a rise in status within the forbidden city. However, there were often hundreds or thousands of concubines within the imperial palace, and it was common for many of them to never even meet the emperor throughout their lifetimes. Many spent their entire lives hoping to be chosen, only to have their hopes go unfulfilled. It is also important to note that the experiences of concubines would have varied widely depending on the specific circumstances in which they found themselves. Some concubines may have been content with their situation, while others may have been unhappy and may have wished for a different life. It is likely that some concubines were happy to not receive the attention of the emperor, as this may have spared them from the pressure and scrutiny that came with being a favored concubine. A good few were able to rise through the ranks to become consorts or even the emperor's primary wife and they often played important roles in court politics and the upbringing of the emperor's children. Those who were ranked lower in the hierarchy are required to attend to the needs of higher-ranked concubines, and are also responsible for tending to the needs of the empress. They were often used as political pawns and were expected to engage in court politics and intrigue in order to advance the interests of their families and factions. Some concubines were able to use their beauty, intelligence, and cunningness to gain the favor of the emperor and rise to positions of power and influence within the court. Despite the privileges they enjoyed, life as a concubine was not always easy. Competition among concubines was fierce, and many lived in a state of constant anxiety and insecurity. 
some concubines resorted to murder, scheming and plotting in order to gain the emperor's favor and secure a better position for themselves because their status within the harem could change rapidly depending on the whims of the ruler. Unfortunately, these women cannot divorce, remarry or return to their families after the death of their husband. During the reign of the Hongwu Emperor, the founder of the Ming Dynasty, concubines were subjected to severe torture and control in all aspects of their daily lives due to the emperor's pride and jealousy. As a result, he implemented the practice of killing, forcing suicide, or burying living concubines alongside his deceased body in order to maintain control over them after his death. This practice continued under the Yongle and Hongxi emperors. However, the Jungtong emperor, in his will of 1464, abolished this practice, thus saving the concubines of future emperors from the risk of death. Similarly, the tenth ruler of the Ming dynasty Emperor Zengde gained an interest in the ordinary lives of his citizens. He had a habit of slipping out at night to frequent local brothels in disguise, but still collected a large number of concubines. It is said that many of these concubines starved to death due to a lack of food and accommodation. Also, Emperor Jia Jing, who succeeded Emperor Zengde, became obsessed with finding an elixir that would provide him with eternal life. He believed that the key ingredient in this elixir was the menstrual blood of virgins. As a result, he ordered the rounding up of thousands of girls to be taken to the forbidden city, where they were harvested for their menstrual blood. These girls were given a restricted diet of mulberries and dew in an effort to keep their bodies pure, which led to many of them dying from starvation. In 1542, a group of 16 concubines attempted to rebel and execute Emperor Jiajing in what became known as the Renyin Plot. However, the rebellion was unsuccessful, and the Empress Fang ordered the concubines to be put to death by slow slicing. Because the Emperor was unconscious for several days after the incident. One famous example of a concubine who gained influence and power was Empress Dowager Sitchi. She was a concubine of the Qianfeng Emperor and gave birth to the only surviving male heir, who became the Tungji Emperor. After the death of the Tungji Emperor, Sitchi became the ultimate ruler of the Qing dynasty in China for 47 years. She is known for her strong influence and power within the Qing dynasty, and is often considered one of the most successful concubines. Even so, her rule has also been criticized for its corruption and its failure to modernize and reform the Qing empire. In 1911, the Qing dynasty, which was the last imperial dynasty in China, was overthrown and replaced by a republic. One of the first actions of the new government was to outlaw concubinage, along with polygamy. The lives of concubines could be summed up in just one quote, every man for himself, and God for us all.